Okay, so I hope you all enjoyed your break. Welcome back, and we're going to dive right back into our, the program of today with our next speaker, who is Clemens Egger. After finishing his neuroscience master's at the University of Zurich, he is now a PhD student working in the Department of Psychiatry, Psychotherapy, and Psychosomatics, as I understand, working on DMT and pharma ayahuasca, but he's going to tell us much more about it. Welcome, Clemens. Okay, so hi, everybody. Thanks, Federico, for inviting me and having me here. It's a great pleasure to talk to you here. And I'm yeah, representing our research group, the Psychedelic Research and Therapy Development Group uh, that is led by Milan Scheidegger. Um, and we will, I will start off with showing you the team. It's not the complete team list, but I think most of them are represented here on the slide. And we see on the left, Milan Scheidegger is the group leader and also kind of the co-founder together with Dario Dornbierer, Davor Kosanich, and Michael Kometer of the Reconnect Foundation and Reconnect Labs, which is a yeah, spin-off um, startup company that is now kind of strongly supporting our research group as well. And yeah, you see some other um, PhD students like Helena Eicher, Michael Müller, Dila Suai, Berit Singer is doing her postdoc and Daniel Melling. And yeah, then the last one to have joined the team as a PhD student would be me. Um, yeah, then I would quickly um, introduce you what kind of the vision of Reconnect and Reconnect Labs is. So um, this idea started um, first to um, yeah, come up with a solution on how to extract uh, I, a pharma was car. I will tell you later what that exactly means. Um, and to yeah, come from the botanical extracts to a formulation that then could be used in psychotherapy later on. And for that, we had to assess safety and tolerability of this product. And we conduct neuroimaging studies with EEG. One has been done, and now we will do something with fMRI. And I will also support Paul in our upcoming PET study. And yeah, the bigger goal in the end is that we can have um, clinical trials going on and target yeah, mainly um, stress-related affective disorders. Okay, so I would start now with telling you what actually PharmaWaska is, but anyways, we heard it already. So it's a repetition. So you have um, kind of two compounds. So on the one hand, the psychedelic compound, which would be DMT. And on the other hand, you then need a monoamino oxidase inhibitor. And in this case, we, um, yeah, uh, use harmine, um, which is a beta alkaloid that is part of yeah, the traditional or ayahuasca brew. And when you combine those two substances, the um, DMT becomes orally active. And that's actually the reason why um, you do that, because otherwise DMT could maybe be active when you inject it or if you smoke it but that might not be the most practical way then to do psychotherapy in a later stage. Then I would now uh, talk about what is PharmaWaska not. And if you see here on this picture, um, this bowl containing ayahuasca, which is this shamanic brew. And yeah, since we are doing the synthetic form of it, we can't really say that this is the same thing. Um, mainly because kind of the whole cultural context is not given when we take some little pills or something of that sort without a yeah, shamanic embedding. And so we 
really want to say that this is kind of not what we're doing to bring ayahuasca to our Western society, because I think this would be wrong in regards of respect to ayahuasca and how it's traditionally used. Uh, and yeah, that's why I think this is just good to make that clear. And then again, ayahuasca, the botanical origins, as we have also heard before, um, we have different plants that either contain a beta alkaloids, like a beta carbolin, sorry, like Banistropsis capi, which is the original or one of the original ayahuasca wines, um, which is also translated from the indigenous name to wine of the soul. And on the other hand, we need compounds that um, contain DMT. There, one example would be Psychotria viridis, or as we see here on the next page, Mimosa hostilis. So our group started basically by Dario um, making uh, extract of Mimosa hostilis to yeah, gain crystallized DMT in the end so that we could would use this for our experiments. And yeah, I mean, it was kind of a lot of plant material he had then to break down to get enough DMT for our studies. And yeah, here I want to show you on just a headline of an article that was written about the research group and this kind of translates to yeah, a university hospital of Zurich plays around with psychedelic trips. And you can see here also, I mean, they put this picture where you see the kind of um, stereotypical ayahuasca setting and portrayed this kind of as yeah, belonging to what we do. But on that picture, you actually see how our room looked like where participants did their experiences. And yeah, these um, labs were host, uh, are part of um, Professor Landolt's um, sleep labs, and he was so generous to let us do our research in there. And we tried to yeah, make them as yeah, cozy looking as possible but still it's not the same as going into the jungle and doing ayahuasca there, I would say. Okay, then what our long-term vision and goal with the whole project is, is for one, in one side to um, do research in neuroscience and phenomenology and investigate the mechanisms of action of uh, psychedelics on the mind and brain and then also investigate in the potential therapeutic um, value of psychedelic compounds. And with all the knowledge we gather, we then in the end want to develop transformation-based therapies for different affective disorders, such as um, depression, um, OCD also, and uh, addiction or anxiety disorders. And this is a yeah, great book that kind of has a lot of knowledge in it and shows that ayahuasca is increasingly recognized with, for its um, beneficial effects on various um, yeah, diseases or disorders that are not only part of kind of a malfunctioning um, mental state, but also uh, it has been shown to have some immunio, immunomodular effects, neuroprotective effects, also neurotrophic effects, as we have seen before today also. But still, these effects are, yeah, they have to be further investigated to be really solid evidence that ayahuasca can be used for all, the, all these different things. Okay, then I would like to um, tell you about the studies we have conducted so far with PharmaWasca. So it's mainly two studies that we have done. So the first one was a 
open label kind of pilot study with 10 participants and the second one then with 31 participants that went through the whole study procedure. And what you can see here, it's all male participants and we want to change that now in the next study. So we really want to now just focus on our 50-50 split and include women just as males because I guess that's anyways then more representative for the whole, yeah, for the whole human society. Okay, and yeah, the first study we did to find a kind of right dosing pattern that we can then use for uh, more placebo controlled studies where we want to investigate the effects on different um, aspects of the human brain like social cognition was part of um, the second study, phenomenology. So this is kind of Daniel Melling's um, specialty to um, make some micro phenomenological interviews with the participants, which means he really is interested in focusing on specific short time points during the experience and wants to know everything about um, what the participants experienced during, during these um, specific time points, which is really interesting. And I'm uh, curious then to see how the results will look like. And then we did some EG um, measurements and unfortunately they are also not analyzed yet. So I can't really show you a lot of data yet. And we looked at blood marker concentrations of, for example, oxytocin or um, stress related hormones and see what Amawaska can do on these kind of blood markers. And yeah, the open label study was done to also assess if it's feasible to use pharmawaska in studies and what we have seen so far then also with the second study was that participants generally tolerated this formulation quite well and it was safe and what is maybe also of interest that nobody had to um, vomit basically which is kind of common for ayahuasca drinkers and so with the synthetic form we could get rid of this kind of side effect. Although when asking the traditional um, users, they might say that this vomiting is kind of a purging um, thing and is beneficial for the whole experience. But yeah, anyways, participants of, of our studies also kind of said that it worked well and they were kind of happy not to have such a bodily discomfort during the experience. Um, yeah, here you can see some preliminary results of our um, analysis of the five dimensional or 11 dimensional altered states of consciousness questionnaire, which is kind of the standard uh, questionnaire to assess how strong the effects of the substance were. And here you can see, for example, what is always very strong with psychedelic experiences is the um, imagery so that people report having visual alter alterations or hallucinations. And also here, for example, the anxiety subscale that was kind of, yeah, not seen with our um, participant cohort. And then in the end, we can say that pharmawaska can induce transformative experiences from what we have seen. And this might then be well suited for psychotherapy. And yes, yeah, so I already mentioned, we kind of saw little side effects and didn't see uh, impaired cognition, which in my opinion often comes from when people are overdosed which happens kind of randomly or occasionally in ayahuasca ceremonies because the uh, content of the active ingredients is not always the same and it's hard to dose. And yeah, you know, by doing this pharmawaska approach, we kind of get uh, got the solution for that. 
And I just want to mention you this one specific task that participants had to do in the second study. It's a karaoke task, so after enrollment, they were asked to um, just sing along with a pop song that they know um, with noise canceling earphones on and they just should sing as loud as possible and in the um, substance um, sessions they then were um, given the audio recordings of the, them singing and of the other people singing and this was made to induce embarrassment and we wanted to see then if um, this uh, pharmawaska treatment um, helps them to be more self-compassionate. And indeed it did in the end. And this was kind of, I don't know, the funniest task we did in the study. <laughs> okay, and then I now want to talk about what's coming next. So we have this meditation retreat study planned at the Stiftung Felsentor which also Franz Vollenweider did kind of a similar approach uh, a few years ago with psilocybin. And we um, yeah, um, hire basically or um, enroll um, trained meditators that should at least have um, formal meditation training of 1000 hours um, yeah, to come up in the mountains and spend three days there in a retreat light like setting and on the second day they are then given or half of them is given pharmawaska and we want to investigate um, how they kind of experience um, this psychedelic state and if it can facilitate a deep meditative state uh, more easily and then here also Daniel will be focusing on the microphenomenology of the experience. And we will be curious to see if we can find that um, trained meditators are actually have better, I don't know, vocabulary to describe these kind of experiences of pure being and just an awareness state without anything distracting them. And what I will be doing in the study is also to um, look at the brain activity with fMRI of the participants. So one day before the retreat and one day after the retreat. And I would be mostly interested in if um, the pharmawaska experience makes them more compassionate and increases their um, empathy. And another study that we will be, do, will be doing soon is um, a group study. So, uh, so far we did our studies in uh, single subject settings. And we kind of want to see if we can implement this whole pharmawaska procedure then into group settings also for upcoming clinical trials, because we, um, here again, we would like to um, build a bridge to um, the traditional ayahuasca setting where people do the ceremonies together and not just on a, uh, I don't know, one to one occasion, so to say. And what we will do differently with this study is also to not have a um, placebo control group, but a low dose control group, like Bego Haslow mentioned in his study with LSD, because we also thought that this might be more um, yeah, beneficial for the outcome since usually participants that want to partake in such studies with psychedelics are doing it also for the experience and what you measure then when people get the placebo is often kind of a disappointment effect. And some way to get a bit around that is to not make such standard placebo controlled studies, but rather use a lower dose condition. And yeah, what we kind of do as a framework for this study is to 
make preparatory and integratory um, group meetings. So for preparation, it's good for the participants of the same group to get to know each other before. And we will kind of ask them to tell us what their intentions for participating is so that we can also give them a bit of psychoeducation on what to expect and what not to expect and just in general to get closer as a group since this might be very important um, for them, the outcome of the yeah, whole group um, a session, so to say. And then for integration, we kind of, again, want to bring them together and create some space where they can share their experiences. And we try then with um, you know, trained psychotherapists and psychiatrists to um, give them some yeah, knowledge on how to integrate what they learned during their experiences into their life so that it can be have a beneficial outcome for longer and not just for, I don't know, a few days. And after that, it's kind of forgotten already. This is what we should not try to get at when we do psychedelic therapy. And the main research questions that we want to ask with this study is, yeah, for once, if pharmawaska is suitable for group sessions, and this would have a lot of yeah, benefits also cost-wise because so far the treatment with psychedelic substances is also a, a question of can I afford it and if you can create some um, group work that then works in the end then you could facilitate this experience to a broader community which is what we also want to do in the end. And on the other hand, we want to figure out if pharmawaska can change how we perceive consciousness. And with that, I mean not our own consciousness, but consciousness in general also in others and also in um, non-human or non-animate uh, ob objects. Because um, yeah, many people reported also in more traditional settings that they can talk with some spirit-like spirit entities. And I would be curious if we can replicate such an effect in the lab, basically. And for that, I have created this task. It's a behavioral task. I call it the aliveness task. And uh, currently, we are validating this task. And therefore, I would ask you if you're interested to participate in rating um, the task. And for that, I've put up uh, the links where you can reach this task. And you just need a computer and a keyboard to do it. It won't take so long, and it would help us a lot if you are willing to do it. And yeah, for any other things, you can also write me an email or write our team an email, which would be psychedelic research at lee.uch.ch. And I guess as we then will soon be recruiting um, new participants for our studies, you're also welcome to approach us for that and just hit our team an email and then we can see if it works out in the end for you. And with that, I would yeah, end my presentation and thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Clemens. Sorry, I just have a, can I have, ask a question? I have yeah. a quick question. Um, uh, Pharma Ayahuasca, does it have the same um, side effects sort of as normal ayahuasca would have, such as vomiting or anything like no, that? No, actually not. We didn't see anyone vomit or we saw one participant had to vomit, but it was on his placebo session. So <laughs> it was not really related to that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? I mean, did the uh, participants uh, have pr prior experience with ayahuasca and could compare? What was the differences between? 
Um, mm. I'm not sure. Probably most of them didn't, but maybe one or two had, but I don't think that there were many that did ayahuasca before. So to relate to the previous question, you're not restricting to recruit only naive participants who had never taken ayahuasca? Yeah, um, it's not a hard exclusion criterion, but we still try to not uh, include participants who have done like a really uh, psychedelics many times because this would then kind of distort the effects for sure. Yeah. Um, how is the setting on these family Waska sessions? Um, so in the lab, you mean the ones we already did? Yes. Um, yeah, so the participants would come in the morning and they have a kind of mattress and some comfortable chair built onto the mattress, so to say, where they can sit comfortably for the whole experience. and. For the EEG um, study, they had to wear a EEG cap for quite some time also. And they did some um, um, questionnaires now and then to we assessed how their acute effects were on rating scales and they had to do that. But, uh, and they had to do some um, yeah, behavioral tasks like the karaoke task, for example, and other tasks. And they were always mixed between yeah, times where they didn't have to do anything and just stay there and experience what they experience. And is it, how is it administrated? Is it the caps? Is it powder? Is it the beverage as well? Um, yeah, we... I think I can't really tell you that because this is kind of intellectual property of the Reconnect Foundation and Labs. So, yeah, I'm sorry for that. All right. <laughs> um, do you experience a lot of criticism about your research because it being connected to drugs and to like sensitive substances? Yeah, I mean, there's always some criticism, but I think not regarding um, the fact that we're using drugs per se, but it's more also from the ayahuasca community that say our approach is not really appropriate because it's not good or fair to say we can extract the yeah, divine healing properties of the yeah, divine plants just by putting it into some kind of pharmaceutical um, device, so to say. It's already today the second talk about ayahuasca, but when you yeah. read about psychedelics online and the research, you mostly hear about psilocybin, ketamine, MDMA. Mm -hmm. What sparked your interest to ayahuasca particularly? And the second question, are you going to do a study comparing pharmawasca with ayahuasca itself? Mm, okay, yeah. So to the second question, I don't think we, with our lab, will try to make a comparison study where we use ayahuasca next to pharmawasca. It's rather that we can compare it then with other labs to do ayahuasca studies. And yeah, what interests me about it is, I don't know, I'm interested also in psilocybin. So it's not that I would just say pharmawasca is better in any sense. It's just maybe good to have different substances. And uh, it's nice that a lot of research groups are working on psilocybin also, and maybe we can then see in the end that pharmawasca might be better for a certain condition and psilocybin for another. But I guess that's kind of what the future will tell. Uh, we have time for one more question. Yeah, uh, Are you trying to get some in inspiration from indigenous people using ayahuasca in your, to like kind of implement it in your therapy? Um, 
Yeah, I guess to a certain extent for sure. But I mean, I'm not the expert on the therapeutic side. And, but what I've seen in other clinical trials is that nowadays kind of acceptance and commitment therapy is one good approach that can be combined with psychedelics. So more rather a Western approach, but also, I mean, it's always uh, so that also the original traditions have some yeah, kind of knowledge that we can then also derive use from. Okay, thank you very much, Clemens. Thank you.